Hello everybody, this is Dr. Nadeem and we are with Neelam Path Lectures, the Pursue series. As you are aware, all our lectures are available on YouTube. You can easily view them as well as download them. You can go to the playlist and view exactly chapter-wise all the lectures. We also have a Telegram group where you can join the group and that will help you in accessing all lecture related information. All the lecture details are available on the group. We also have a Google Drive where the PDF of most of the lectures are available. You can freely download them. And we have a master integration key which helps you navigating between the PDF, the videos, as well as the, uh, the various activities of the group. These are the disclaimers. We are with phase three, which is recorded pathology lectures. And today we have pursued 2M, which is lymph nodal pathology. And we are streaming from the Department of Pathology Regional Cancer Center, Thiruvaran Thapuram. And to talk on today's topic, which is follicular lymphoma, we have Dr. Simi CM. She's an MBBS from Thrissur, Kerala, and MD Pathology, a gold medalist from the famous St. John's Medical College, Bangalore. She's presently an assistant professor in the Department of Pathology at the RCC Thiruvaran Thapuram, has been an ex-consultant at HCG Hospital, Bangalore, as well as an ex-consultant in Kim's Hospital, Thiruvaran Thapuram. Her areas of interest being hematopathology and oncopathology, lymphoma and leukemia studies, the flow cytometry, molecular pathology, breast pathology, and liver transplant pathology. She's got multiple publications in national and international journals. With this, let me request Dr. Simi CM to start her lecture on follicular lymphomas. Dr. Simi, all to you. Thank you so much. Good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Simi from Department of Pathology. Region Cancer Center to Andrew, and I'll be talking on follicular lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma is an intraline B cell neoplasm, usually involving the lymph node. And the neoplasm morphologically resembles the lymphoid follicle, hence, it is called follicular lymphoma. Now, this is the structure of a normal lymph node where we have the cortex and medulla. In the cortex, we have follicles with germinal centers. In the germinal center, there are centrocytes and centroplasm. Follicular lymphoma is a neoplasm arising from the cells in the germinal center, that is from the centrocytes and the centroplasm. So, follicular lymphoma, uh, in follicular lymphoma, follicular pattern can be present throughout the lymph node or at least partially. Four variants of uh, follicular lymphoma include in situ follicular neoplasia, duodenal type follicular lymphoma, testicular follicular lymphoma, diffuse variant of follicular lymphoma. Primary cutaneous follicle center cell lymphoma are classified separately. Pediatric type follicular lymphoma is also considered as a separate entity. I'll be discussing about these entities and about changes in new WHO classification later. Coming to epidemiology, follicular lymphoma const constitute about 20% of all lymphomas. This is more common in USA and Western Europe when compared to Eastern Europe and Asia. It most commonly affects adults and shows a slight female predominance. It's rare below 18 years. Coming to etiology, characteristic translocation present in follicular lymphoma is translocation 1418. Individuals with this, with high environmental exposure to pesticides and herbicides uh, have increased number of cells carrying this translocation 1418. This may explain the increased risk of follicular lymphoma in such individuals. Most important translocation present in uh, follicular lymphoma is the reciprocal translocation involving BCL2 gene. BCL2 gene is located on chromosome 18 and IGH gene on chromosome 14. So part of the chromosome including BCL2 is translocated to chromosome 14. So when this translocation occurs, this BCL2 comes under the transcription control of IGH. And this results in increased expression of BCL2. As you know, BCL2 is an anti-apoptotic protein. So in the germinal center, if 
the cells have this mutation, the cells won't undergo apoptosis. Instead, they proliferate. So this acts as an initiating event. But the translocation, 1418, alone is not sufficient to cause the lymphoma. Initiation of the classical follicular lymph, classic follicular lymphoma begins in the bone marrow with translocation 1480. From the bone marrow, these three B cells will be transformed into centroblast. The centroblast formed already has this translocation. And the cells with this translocation are called the follicular lymphoma like cells or the FL like cells. They behave like the precursor cells. So, when these called FL like cells enter the lymph node, they proliferate in the germinal center. Uh, so, this condition in which the lymph nodes have follicular lymphoma cell like cells in the germinal center are called in situ follicular neoplasia. These cells can re enter the lymph node as well as they can disseminate into the circulation. During proliferation within the secondary germinal center and in secondary lymphoid organs, these cells acquire further mutations to form follicular lymphoma. The, among them, the important mutations include KMT2D and CRE, BPP, etc. Coming to the sites of involvement, follicular lymphoma mainly is the nodal disease. But involvement of lymphoreticular organs like spleen, bone marrow, peripheral blood are frequently encountered and less commonly valdearic. Pure external representations are uncommon. Most commonly affected sites include GIT, soft tissue, breast, or gladnix, etc. And in external sites, follicular lymphoma tend to be of higher grade and they may lack BCL2 translocation. Coming to clinical findings, most patients have widespread disease at the time of diagnosis, including peripheral and central lymphadenopathy and splenomegaly. Bone marrow is involved in around 40 to 70 positive cases and the disease has got a chronic lapsing clinical goal. Grossly, the lymph nodes are enlarged, the cut surface appears fleshy and the neoplastic follicles gives it a bulging appearance on the cut surface and the, you can see the vague nodularity on the cut surface here. Plain is uh, plain involved by follicular lymphoma, shows a uniform expansion of the white pulp with no evidence of involvement of the red pulp. Coming to microscopy, microscopically follicular lymphoma closely resembles reactive follicular hyperplasia. So what are the features, microscopic features to differentiate these two entities? As you can see here, in reactive lymph node, lymph node architecture is preserved. You can see the cortex medulla separately, and the follicles are predominantly disposed in the cortex. And the follicles are discrete and they are well separated by interfollicular tissue. Whereas in follicular lymphoma, there is complete effacement of the architecture. The cortex and medulla are filled with multiple nodules and they are of uniform size. The follicles are closely packed and uh, they are of uniform size and uh, there is there is candy intervening in the follicular tissue. In reactive lymphoma, there is no perinodal involvement, whereas in follicular lymphoma, follicles penetrate to the adjacent perinodal fat forming nodules. In reactive node, the follicles are of varying sizes. They have distinct cell margins. Each follicle has got a germinal center and a mantle zone with enough interfollicular space in between. Whereas in follicular lymphoma, follicles are of uniform size. The follicles are poorly defined. They have an attenuator or absent mantle zone. Polarization is present in reactive lymph node, whereas it is absent in follicular lymphoma. In the active node, you get a mixture of cells in the germinal center, which includes centrocytes, centroblasts, tingible body macrophages, immunoblasts, etc. 
Whereas in follicular lymphoma, it's the monomorphic population predominantly composed of centrocytes, admixed with centroplasts. Tingible body macrophages are not seen in follicular lymphoma. So I said for follicular lymphoma is composed of two types of cells, that is centrocytes and the centroblasts. The closer view of the centrocytes and centroblasts. Centrocytes are small to medium-sized cells. They have elongated cleave nucleus and inconspicuous nucleoli. Whereas centroplasts are larger cells, that is, they are about three times the size of the normal lymphocytes. They have round to oval nuclei, vesicular chromatin, one to three nucleoli, which are placed towards the nuclear membrane. So grading of follicular lymphoma is based on the number of centroblasts in 10 neoplastic follicles. You can see the large cells here. These are the centroblasts. So at least 10 hyperfields within different follicles must be evaluated to grade follicular lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma is graded into three categories, grade 1, 2, and 3. Grade 1 is 0 to 5 centroblasts per hyperfield. Grade 2 is 6 to 15 centroblasts per hyperfield. Grade 3 is more than 15 centroblasts per hyperfield. Grade 3 is again divided into grade 3A and 3B. In 3A, centrocytes are still present, whereas in grade 3B, there, there are no centrocytes, it's only sheets of centroblasts. But according to new WHO fifth edition, grading is not mandatory. I'll be discussing about those updates in the coming slides. As I said earlier, reactive lymph node closely mimics follicular lymphoma morphologically. So let us see how we differentiate between these two entities using immunohistochemistry. Here you have a reactive follicle with germinal center and a nodule of follicular lymphoma. CD20 is a B cell marker which is positive in the follicles in reactive lymph node as well as in follicular lymphoma. But in follicular lymphoma, CD20 positivity can be seen in the, in the follicular area also. So in CD20 positive in the nodules as well as in the in the follicular area in follicular lymphoma. CD3, the T cell marker, it is negative in the fault in uh, reactive hyperplasia as well as in follicular lymphoma. CD10 and BCL6 are germinal center markers. So it will be positive in germinal center of a reactive node. As you know, this uh, follicular lymphoma also arises from the germinal center. So follicular lymphoma cells, nodules of follicular lymphoma will also be positive for CD10 and BCL6. In follicular lymphoma, CD10 expression can be seen in the interfollicular neoplastic cells also, whereas BCL6 is down related in the interfollicular area. And another important marker to differentiate between reactive node and follicular lymphoma is the BCL2. It's a very important marker used to distinguish between reactive hyperplasia and follicular lymphoma. BCL2 is negative in, in the germinal center of reactive lymph node, whereas it is positive in follicular lymphoma. But rarely BCL2 can be negative in high grade follicular lymphoma. Grade 3 follicular lymphoma can be BCL2 negative. Then K67 index is very high in reactive lymph node, that is almost 100 percentage in reactive lymph node, whereas it is low in follicular lymphoma. This also helps to differentiate between these two entities. So, coming to immunohistochemistry, follicular lymphoma express B cell associated antigens like CD19, 20, 22 and 79A. This is positive for germinal center markers like BCL6 and CD10. Grade 3 may, B may lack CD10 but retain BCL6 expression. As I said, CD10 expression can be seen in follicles as well as in the follicular area in follicular lymphoma. Expression of CD10 is stronger in follicles when compared to in the follicular area. BCL6 is frequently downregulated in the interfollicular area. 
Other germinal center markers like LMO2, HDR are positive in follicular lymphoma, but these markers are not generally required for the routine diagnosis. We uh, use LMO2 in uh, difficult cases sometimes. BCL2 is expressed in most of the cases of follicular lymphoma, especially in the low grades, but can be negative in high grade uh, follicular lymphoma. Grade 3 is FL can be negative for BCL2. FTC markers like CD21 and 23 can be used to highlight the node use in follicular lymphoma. Case sent for proliferation index generally correlates with the grade of follicular lymphoma. Grade 1 to 2 cases have a proliferation index of less than 20%. In grade, in grade 3 cases, proliferation index is mostly more than 20%. Relative proportion of follicular and diffuse areas in follicular lymphoma are to be noted and should be mentioned in the report. If it is more than 75% follicular, it's called follicular. If it is 25 to 75% follicular, it's called follicular and diffuse. When it is less than 25% follicular, it's called focally follicular but predominantly diffuse. Presence of diffuse areas composed entirely of this large centroblast cell. It is equivalent to diffuse large B cell lymphoma. So it's very important to mention the type of the cell and the diffuse areas in your report. So how do you assess for uh, diffuse areas in a follicular lymphoma? The markers used are follicular dendritic cell markers like CD21 and CD23. A diffuse area is defined as an area of tissue completely lacking follicles as evidenced by the absence of FTC markers that is 21 and 23. See here you can see the nodules as well as the diffuse areas. CD23 stain here which is highlighting the follicles. The follicular dendritic meshwork is highlighted by the FTC mark, marker 23 whereas it is negative in the diffuse area. Transformation or progression FL can occur. Follicular lymphoma usually progress to diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma may also progress to a lymphoma resembling Burkitt lymphoma or a high grade B cell lymphoma with MIC and BCL2 rearrangement. FL can relapse as classic Hodgkin lymphoma. Rarely, patient may develop B lymphoblastic uh, leukemia by lymphoma. Occurrence of histiocytic or hidden dendritic cell sarcoma has also been described in patients with follicular lymphoma. Bone marrow is involved in, commonly involved in follicular lymphoma. The characteristic in involvement in bone marrow is seen in the paratrabicular region. In bone marrow, follicular lymphoma infiltration is seen in the paratrabicular region and these cells are predominantly the centrocytes. Grading is not performed on a bone marrow biopsy because discordant bone marrow involvement is common in follicular lymphoma. That is a higher grade in the lymph node and a lower grade in the bone marrow. So never do a grading of follicular lymphoma on a bone marrow biopsy. Peripheral blood can get involved in follicular lymphoma. Patient present with absolute lymphocytosis with a high count in around 5 to 10 percent of cases. In peripheral blood, you get the, these atypical cleaved cells. These uh, atypical cells are called the buttex cells. They are basically the centrocytes. They have the intended cleaved nucleus. They are small to medium size with the cleaved nucleus. This, these buttex cells are characteristic of follicular lymphoma. So when we have these uh, atypical cells in the bone marrow or peripheral blood, we can do immunophenotyping by flow cytometry in such cases. On flow cytometry, the follicular lymphoma cells are positive for B cell markers like 19, 20, CD10 and CD10 is a specific marker for follicular lymphoma. And these uh, uh, B cells will show light chain restriction. They will express either kappa or lambda. T cell markers like CD5, 3, extra will be negative and be negative for um, CD23 and 200. 
However, CD10 is present in more if the CD10 is present in diagnostic of follicular lymphoma. However, absence of CD10 can be seen in leukemic phase of follicular lymphoma. So, a negative CD10 expression on flow cytometry does not exclude follicular lymphoma. Coming to differential diagnosis, as I said earlier, the closest differential is reactive follicular hyperplasia. We have discussed about the um, microscopic findings and IHP findings to differentiate between these two entities. Now, let us see the other differentials. The single root PTGC. In PTGC, the nodule is the larger, they are around three to five times larger than the reactive follicles. And the germinal B cells and the B cells in PTGC are negative for BCL2. The other differential is Castleman disease. Where you get these follicles, the follicles are widely separated, they have constant mandel zones, and the lymphoid cells of the atletic follicles are negative for BCL6 by AC, and the residual germinal center do not express BCL2. The other uh, differential is NLPH cell. NLPH, you get the typical LP cell, and the nodules are larger, and uh, those LP cells uh, are neg uh, negative for CD10, BCL2, etc. And uh, the other differential is lymphocyte rich classical Hodgkin lymphoma, where you have, but in this we have the RS like RS cells, which are positive for CD30. And the most important differential is uh, closest differential for follicular lymphoma is other small B cell lymphoma, that is, which include mantle cell lymphoma, man margin stone lymphoma, and CLL bar SLL. Other low-grade lymphomas like PLL by SLL, mantle, and marginal, they can also exhibit a nodular pattern. And uh, they are also composed of these small to medium-sized cells. So these entities closely mimic follicular lymphoma. So let us see how to differentiate uh, them from follicular lymphoma by immunohistochemistry. PLL and mantle cell lymphoma, they express, along with CD20, they express CD5. CLL bar SLL is positive for CD23 and LAF1, whereas mantle is positive for cycling D1 and negative for LAF1 and CD23. For the lymphoma, as I said, is positive for um, 20, it's negative for 5, and CD10, germinal center markers like CD10 and BCL6 are positive, and it's negative for cycling D1. Whereas mantle margin stone lymphoma is the diagnosis of exclusion, which is negative for um, 5, 10, VCL, 6, cyclone D1, LAF1, IRTA1 can be positive. Coming to cytogenetics, the characteristic translocation in follicular lymphoma is translocation 1480. This is present in around 90% of low grade follicular lymphomas. Fish is more sensitive than PCR-based approaches for detecting this translocation. Other genetic alterations include loss of 1P, 6Q, 10Q, etc. Coming to prognosis, Follicular Lymphoma International Prognostic Index uses five prognostic uh, five parameters for prognosis, which include age, hemoglobin, LDH stage of the disease and the nodal areas involved. A score of 0 to 1 is low risk, 2 is intermediate risk, 3 to 5 is high risk. Coming to variants of follicular lymphoma, this include in-situ follicular neoplasia, duodenal type follicular lymphoma, testicular follicular lymphoma and diffuse variant of follicular lymphoma. First, the in situ follicular neoplasia. As the term suggests, it is in situ. Follicle, follicle size is normal. Follicle size is normal with the nodal architecture is preserved. There is partial or total colonization of a reactive follicle with centrocytes and it is confined to the germinal center. See, this is a, uh, this, again, see here is the no, node with preserved architecture. This so, is CD20 stain which shows. Normal distribution of follicles and this, this colonization of these atypical cells in the germinal center. These 
cells are positive for BCL2 and CD10. Risk of progression of in situ follicular neoplasia to FL is less than 5%. This can coexist with follicular lymphoma or other forms of B cell lymphoma. So, in case of uh, in situ follicular neoplasia with no evidence of overt lymphoma, wait and watch strategies recommended. This has got an excellent prognosis. Processed um, differential for this in situ follicular neoplasia is partial involvement by follicular lymphoma. How to differentiate these two? They said in in situ follicular neoplasia, the nodal architecture is intact, follicles are of normal size, they are well uh, involved follicles are widely scattered, mantle cuff is intact. Whereas in passion involvement, the architecture is altered, follicle size, this follicle size is expanded. In involved follicles are grouped together and the mantle cuff is attenuated or blurred. And immunohistochemistry wise, BCL2 and CD10 is strongly expressed in in situ follicular neoplasia, whereas in partial involvement, it is of variable intensity. In situ FL is composed exclusively of centrocytes, whereas in partial FL, there are centrocytes as well as centroblasts. In in situ uh, FL, the atypical cells are confined to the germinal center. Whereas in partial involvement, they are found outside the germinal center also. Coming to the next variant, the duodenal type follicular lymphoma. These are mostly diagnosed incidentally. We present as localized mass. The morphology, phenotype, everything is similar to nodal follicular lymphoma. Translocation 1418 is common in this. And 50% of these cases have KMT2D mutation. The less than 10 percent of risk of they have less than 10 percent risk of progression to nodal follicular lymphoma. Wait and watch strategy is preferred, and they have an excellent prognosis. Coming to the next variant, testicular uh, lymphoma. This is common in children and rare in adults. Usually, they are of higher grade, grade three A. It lacks BCL2 translocation. Surgical excision is sufficient in most cases and it has got a very good prognosis. Next variant is diffuse variant of follicular lymphoma. See this here, you can see this is the normal lymph node and this is the diffuse infiltration by centrocytes. So this is called the diffuse variant of follicular lymphoma. In this, there is consistent absence of translocation 1480. Deletion in 1P36 is seen in most cases mainly occurs in the inguinal region as large tumor. They have little tendency to disseminate. They are usually CD10 positive and CD23 positive. Coming to the next variant, this pediatric type follicular lymphoma. Now it is classified as a separate entity. It's a rare follicular lymphoma. It is involving, it involves, uh, in, um, it occurs in children and young adults. Mostly involves lymph nodes of head and neck area. And the histology is of higher grade, grade 3 histology. And they are negative and it lacks BCL2 rearrangement. May not require uh, treatment other than extensions only. Excision is required so, and prognosis is excellent in pediatric FL. Pediatric FL, the morphology is of higher grade, but it has got a Excellent, good prognosis, very good prognosis only. The ex surgical excision is enough. As you can see here, follicles are large and they lack the mantle stones. And the cells are of high grade histology, grade 3 histology. In the higher magnification, you can see the follicles are composed of monotonous population or medium sized lymphoid cells. There is a starry sky pattern because of the uh, you know, histiocytes uh, uh, and uh, principal body macrophages here because here there is increased apoptosis. So high grade morphology, principal body macrophages, uh, large nodules and lack of mandelstones, all these are features of pediatric follicular lymphoma. This is CD20 stain highlighting the follicles, the IPD stain highlighting and the attenuated mandelstone. And these uh, um, cells are strongly positive for CD10. And they are negative for BCL2. There is CD10 positivity and 
negative to the force BCL2. So, this is the uh, diagnostic criteria by WHO for pediatric follicular lymphoma. Morphologically, at least the partial effacement of nodal acute should be present. It's a pure follicular proliferation, expand, follicular cell expand style. They are composed of intermediate sites to and sites which are blasted like cells. Immunostochemistry shows positivity for BCL6 and then negative for BCL2, and they have a high proliferation index. There is no rearrangement of BCL2, BCL6, or IRF4. There is no BCL2 amplification. Clinically, it presents as a nodal disease, most stage 1 and stage 2, involves patients less than 40 years and has got a marked male predominance. Primary cutaneous follicular center cell lymphoma is considered as a distinct clinical pathological entity and it is classified separately. It presents as localized or solitary skin lesion, presenting as erythematous plaques or nodules on forehead, scalp, or trunk. Ra radiotherapy uh, treatment is uh, radiotherapy for localized lesions, then systemic chemotherapy for multifocal and extensive uh, disease. This also has got an excellent prognosis. This is the microscopy of colic. Uh, primary cutaneous follicle center cell lymphoma, you can see the epidermis is not involved. Infiltrate is mainly seen in the perivascular and the periadmixal region. And the, can be either follicular, mixed follicular or diffuse or diffuse pattern of growth. And these cells are positive for PD10 and BCL6 and most cases does not express BCL2. Coming to updates in new WHO. Fifth edition of WHO. According to fifth edition, follicular lymphoma with a follicular with a follicular growth pattern composed of centrocytes and centroplasts and harboring translocation 14 in around 80% of cases are now classified as classic follicular lymphoma. So, so under this classic follicular lymphoma comes follicular lymphoma grade 1, grade 2, and 3A of revised WHO fourth edition. So, whatever low grade follicular lymphoma and grade 3A lymphoma comes under the category of class follicular lymphoma. And according to new WHO, grading of class uh, follicular lymphoma is no longer mandatory. Let us WHO fifth edition takes into account the results of the various studies that have reported poor reproducibility of the grading of follicular lymphoma. In, in addition, they found that majority of the clinical trials using modern treatment protocols have failed to provide uh, you know, evidence of uh, significant difference in the clinical outcome between follicular lymphoma grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3A. And many clinicians tend to treat patients with the, um, uh, this uh, grade, low grade and 3A with similar protocols. So, according to new WHO fifth edition, grading of plastic follicular lymphoma is no longer mandatory. Follicular lymphoma with varying growth patterns, so varying, varying cytologies are classified separately. Growth pattern means uh, follicular lymphoma with diffuse pattern is classified separately. And follicular lymphoma with cytologies, you know, resembling blasted morphology and centros. I mean, now centrocyte morphology, they are classified separately. Most specific entities like you know, duodenal type follicular lymphoma, primary cutaneous follicular syndesal lymphoma, in situ follicular neoplasia, those uh, entities are classified separately. So, this is the mm, new WHO classification of follicular lymphoma. Under this classical fol classic follicular lymphoma comes. Follicular lymphoma grade 1, grade 2, and 3A. Diffused follicular lymphoma variant is now called predominantly diffused follicular lymphoma, and this is considered as a separate entity. Follicular lymphoma with unusual cytology features are classified separately. These include cells with blasted morphology, 
and large dendrocyte like morphology. Follicular lymphoma grade 3B in the earlier classification is now called follicular large B cell lymphoma. In situ follicular neoplasia is now renamed as in situ follicular B cell neoplasm. Pediatric type follicular lymphoma, duodenal type follicular lymphoma, primary cutaneous follicular center, center lymphoma, these are considered as separate entities. So, according to WHO team 5 updates, grade 1 to 2, that is low grade follicular lymphoma, and grade 3A lymphoma is now called classic follicular lymphoma. And grade earlier, Grade 3B is now called follicular large B cell lymphoma. Follicular lymphoma with unusual cytological features. So lymphomas having a blastoid morphology and large endocyte like morphology is now classified into follicular lymphoma with unusual cytological features. The significance of these findings is not yet clear. Some studies are reported are clinical cause. Uh, this is uh, inferior to classic follicular lymphoma. And these cases, they have a high proliferation index. They are negative for CD10. They show strong expression of MAM1. In, in addition, the frequency of BCL2 rearrangement is lower in lower compared to classic follicular lymphoma. This is about the um, updates in new uh, WHO classification. So that is the nutshell about follicular lymphoma. Thank you.